Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make Linzer cookies. And this is a Linzer cookie. As you can see, it takes two almond flavored cookies and sandwiches them together with a layer of jam. And then the top, you can see it has a really pretty coating of uh, confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. And then there's a cutout so we can see the jam. So the um, we're gonna make the cookie dough first and we need some ground almonds. So I start with one cup, that's 150 grams of whole almonds. Now you can um, use, I'm using the blanched uh, almonds, but you could use the natural ones, the ones with the skins on, either way. And I like to toast them because that really brings out the uh, almond flavor of the almonds. So um, I've already done that. So put it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit, 180 degree Celsius oven for about eight to 10 minutes, just until they take on just a little bit of color and you can start to smell the nuts. And then let them cool completely. And then we're going to have to process them until they're finely ground. So um, put them all in your food processor. Okay, so what I'm going to add to the almonds is a quarter of a cup, that's 50 grams of granulated white sugar. And the reason I'm doing that is to, like if you just have put the um, almonds in there by themselves, there is a tendency to maybe over process the almonds and then it becomes a paste. So if you add a little sugar, it helps uh, prevent that from happening. So what we're just going to do is I'm going to put this the food processor on and then just process until really finely ground. It's going to get a little noisy. Okay, that looks good. So I'll show you what you're looking for. See, nice finely ground. So. So now I'm just gonna clean up and get my mixer set up and we'll come back and start our cookie dough. So now we'll start our cookie batter. Uh, if you have an electric stand mixer like I do here, um, use the paddle attachment or you could use a hand mixer for this. We're going to start with one cup, 226 grams of butter. I like to use unsalted, I prefer the flavor, but you could use salted here and have it at room temperature. And then, I'm just going to beat this, you know, maybe for a minute, just until the butter gets nice and creamy and smooth. Okay, looks good. So now I'm going to add a half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar. And then we're going to uh, beat this medium high speed for just until it's nice and light and fluffy, a couple minutes. So this is what you're looking for. You just want to cream it and get some air in there. And so now just scrape down the sides. Make sure you get the bottom of your bowl and get everything mixed together. So next, two large egg yolks, have those at room temperature and that would be about 40 grams if you wanna go by weight. And along with uh, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and try to use a pure vanilla extract, a lot uh, better flavor than the artificial ones. And I'm just gonna beat that in medium speed. Good. So now we're going to um, add our the ground almonds that we've already nice and ground up. So just mix that in. You might want to do it at low speed. Okay. 
simple enough. It's, a, it's actually a really easy batter to make, as you can see. So our last thing is our dry ingredients. Now, in a separate bowl, I have uh, two cups, 260 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. And to that, a linzer dough typically is, has a little spice, so we're adding a half a teaspoon of uh, ground cinnamon along with uh, a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, if you use salted butter, I would probably leave out that salt. And then um, you will need uh, the yellow odor, the skin, the zest of one small lemon. And I'm just gonna whisk all that together. As you, you may notice, I'm not using any baking powder, baking soda, because we don't want these cookies to rise because um, we're sandwiching them together so we don't want them too thick. We don't want them all puffy. So we're not using any artificial leavening here. So now I'm just going to add the flour mixture to our batter. And you will want to start your mixer on low here because you don't want that flour flying up in your face. And just mix it in. going to scrape this down because we want to make sure everything's mixed together. And it's going to be just a touch more. Okay, we're good. So I'll just clean this up a bit. So we, so we have some room. So we need to chill this dough, this batter, because we want to make cutout cookies. So the batter has to be cold enough that we can cut, it, cut them out easily because we don't want them all falling apart as we cut out our cookies. Now this makes about uh, 26 sandwich cookies. If you find that's a little too much, you could always just half this batter. It's very easy to do that to half. Okay, so it's not, I'm gonna cut this in half. Doesn't have to be exact. And then we're going to wrap it in plastic wrap to chill it. So what I do just to kind of speed up that chilling process, because if you try to chill like if it's like this, it'll take quite a while. So I kind of just flatten it. And then I take, now you can do this, I'm using plastic wrap. You could use parchment paper or wax paper as well. And then I just take another piece on top there and then just roll it because we get it to like we wanted our um to cut out the cookies we want about uh a quarter of an inch you know half a centimeter thickness so i'm just going to eyeball this and try to roll it out to that thickness right now and then it's only going to take maybe half an hour to chill this dough which is good Okay, that looks good. Try to get the, how I kind of tell if it's the same thickness. I just run my hand over it and you can kind of tell if there's any parts that are a little thicker. You can just roll it a little more. So there we have it. So what I do now is I just take a baking sheet and just slip that on like that and put it in the fridge. 
maybe half an hour, maybe less, depending on how cold you keep your fridge, and then we'd be, we're ready to cut out. So I'm going to do, roll out my other one, put it in the fridge, and when I come back, we'll start cutting out our cookies. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, cut out our cookies. So first, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius, and line um, two baking sheets with uh, parchment paper, or you could just lightly butter or spray them with a non-stick spray. So what I do, because I've already, like we did, we already rolled out our dough to the thickness we want. So I just peel off the uh, plastic wrap. And then I'm just going to cut it right on here like this. So I'm using, I mean, you can use any shape, any size cookie cutter. This, I'm using a heart shape. Um, it's about three, three inches, seven and a half centimeters. And then you will also need, I have a smaller heart, or, I mean, you could use any shape in the inside, and then just cut. And then it's quite cold, so it just very easily. And then just space them. Try to cut as close as possible, because you want to, you don't want to waste the, uh, the dough when you're cutting, so just peel it off, like so. And then what I do is a baking sheet will fit about um, 12, three across, four down. And then I, so I do, as you can see here, I'll show you, I've done six for the bottom of the cookie and six in the top. So I just take my little tiny cutter and just like so, it pops out. So then that's how you do it. You just go through and then now, when you've used all your dough, you'll have some scraps. You could either just um, re-roll them on a lightly uh, floured surface or you could do it again like I've done. Put your piece of uh, plastic wrap, roll it out Pop it back in the fridge, five, maybe five, 10 minutes. Won't take as long because the dough is already chilled. And just keep doing it like this, whichever way you prefer. So now, bake our cookies. So, uh, you know, for about this size cookie, I would say about 12 to 14 minutes. What you're looking for is them to just get lightly browned around the edges. That's how you know they're done. So I'm gonna do about 12 minutes. Windsor cookies are baked, as you can see, nicely browned around the edges. That's the best sign that they're done. So what I'm going to do is let them chill, you know, a couple minutes and then transfer them to a wire rack to finish cooling before we fill them. Now, one little tip that uh, I find really handy when you're making cutout cookies is once I cut them out and I put them on um, the baking sheet, because, you know, you're kind of working the dough, it gets a little soft. And so I just pop this whole sheet into the fridge, maybe about 10 minutes while my oven is preheating. And that will really firm up the, uh, the cookies because we don't, if they're soft, they will tend to lose their shape um, during baking, which we don't want. So just keep that in mind, you might wanna try that. So we'll let these cool, I'll bake the rest of the cookies off and then I'll show you how to fill them. So now we'll uh, fill our cookies. So once you make sure they're completely cooled, so what I do is take a, uh, a, like a baking sheet, line it with a piece of parchment or wax paper, and then just put the top ones with the cutout on there. So, and then just have a small strainer and some powdered sugar, or you may know that's confectioner sugar or icing sugar, and then just put it over the top as thick or as you want. Okay. And then we're gonna fill them with jam. Now you can use any flavor of jam you want. 
I'm using uh, homemade raspberry jam. There is a uh, recipe along with the video on the site if you want to make your own, or you could just use store-bought in any flavor. So then just, I think you need, you know, maybe a half a cup, 120 milliliters, and then just give it a quick stir, especially if you're taking it um, straight out of the fridge. It's a little cold. I'm going to soften it up. If it's really gelled a lot, like some of the commercially made um, jams are really thick, you might have to pop it in your microwave to soften it up, but this is fine. And then what you want to do, you want to turn your cookies over, so bottoms up. And then just take, you know, maybe a half a teaspoon or so. I mean, you really can put it as thick or as thin as you want. Now, keep in mind, like these uh, cookies are quite crisp. Once you fill them, of course, the jam is going to start softening the cookies. So um, I actually like that, but some people don't. Now, if you want to keep your cookies really crisp, I wouldn't fill them with the jam until the day you're going to serve. Personally, I like to fill them um, a day, two, three days, and then I just store them in the refrigerator. That way they soften, the flavors kind of start to mingle. But, I mean, either way, it's kind of a personal preference there. And then just take top and gently like that. And then um, you still have that little cutout. We want to put a little more jam in there. There's a couple ways you can just take a little spoon and just put it like that. Or if you're doing a large amount, this is kind of fussy doing it this way, just put it in a piping bag and just um, pipe the jam in like so. And there you have it, isn't that? Very festive looking. Red and white is very nice for Christmas or the hearts for Valentine's Day. I mean, really, you can use any shape you want. So I'm just going to try it. Mm. That's so nice. You got that crisp almond flavored cookie, the tart but sweet raspberry jam, and then the powdered sugar. Excellent. So, I mean, like I said, if you like them a little soft, you can cover and store these in the fridge for four or five days. Or you can even freeze the cookies before you fill them. Either way. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybacon.com.